Don't forget the ads feed the ducks and all the ducks that we raised this year were donated to the local food banks. If you want to help out, 50ducksonhottub.com below the video, there's a link. You can make monthly donations, you can make a one-time donation, or you can pick yourself up one of these t-shirts and support the duck adventure. Give to charity this year. Good morning everybody and welcome to the duck adventure for July the 30th. I've been uh, down at the swamp since well, a quarter after five. It's about five after six right now. Not a sign of anything down there. I took the rifle down this time and I just I sat there in total silence and uh, absolutely not a thing. Not, not even very many birds actually this morning. Lots of mosquitoes, but uh, it, nothing, absolutely nothing. So if there's something swimming down in there uh, that's attacking the ducks, it's doing it uh, during the day. Um, there, I did a little more research last night and I, I, they liked old beaver houses and old uh, muskrat houses. Now there is an old beaver house back there. So I've got to uh, I got to go down there with the canoe uh, to go down. Uh, I got to go, I got to check the old beaver house out. Maybe just maybe there's something there. I got to I'm going to talk to some people about traps. Uh, but uh, I, um, we got to get this thing. <laughs> I, I got to I bet you something tells me that it, it's a it's a mink, a mink or an otter because we already know the otters were here uh, last fall. So. You know, because I haven't seen anything flying over since you know the actually since we uh, were finding dead ducks in the yard, you know, uh, and then you know the the and every time I've seen anything fly over, it's always flying over the yard. I've never seen anything flying down the lake, so I don't know. Maybe we got everything here. Maybe we got the hawks and otters uh, and minks. Yeah, who knows? I'm gonna let the ducks out here, and then I'm gonna have my breakfast. We're gonna have some coffees, <laughs> have a breakfast, and I'm taking Doug to the vet.
Oh man, the mosquitoes, you wouldn't believe it guys, they're like really bad because it's um, it's been sprinkling rain all morning while I was out. So the humidity right now is really high, so the mosquitoes are like, it's uh, unbelievable. All the shaking in the camera is me dealing with mosquitoes. Let's look at them going. That's a mess of ducks going to the lake. It's just a whole bunch of white dots going through the swamp. And all the little ones are veering off to the right. They're staying at the creek. They're down at the creek. And the adults are uh, headed out to the water, out to the lake. Well guys, I gotta get a coffee in me. I've been up like far too long without any caffeine. And I'm, honestly, I'm really irritated because I was getting eaten alive by a lot of mosquitoes. And I'm, uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I was down there in the dock and I'm, I wasn't even really thinking about what I was doing because I'm, I gotta say Doug, and Doug uh, this morning is breathing bad. He, uh, yesterday he had a lot of uh, flapping sounds uh, when in his, every time he would inhale and exhale. And today uh, he was laying on the, on the uh, kitchen floor this morning when I came downstairs and he was doing the same thing. So I don't know. The vet, I know when I talk to the vet, he's worried because it's something that he's never had to deal with. So I'm hoping today, uh, there's, I hope there's an improvement, but honestly, I don't think so because I know uh, even I was in the garage yesterday and Doug was laying on the uh, cold cement floor while I was working and uh, he was doing the, you could hear, I could hear, I was standing at the bench and he was about 10, 12 feet from me and I could hear his breathing. So, I don't know. I'm worried about uh, the guy. It's, uh, this is like two, it's two weeks, uh, you know, uh, since we took him to the vet. It's been, uh, you know, two weeks, it's been almost 20 days since the porcupine. So, uh, this is like, this is not normal with a dog uh, to, to have a, a porcupine still bother them this, you know, this, this, this many days after, uh, you know, an encounter. All right, Doug and I are going to the vet. He's excited. Come on. Stay. 131.4. Well, you didn't lose as much weight as I thought you did, Doug. Relax. Yeah. So I know we're going to make you all groggies. Yeah, right. Totally. Again. No but hopefully this time is good news. Oh, you're shaking like a little baby duck. I don't believe how fast he hit the floor. 130 pounds, eh? 131. Go on three, Christine. Yep. One, two, three. The quill that's been irritating Doug's nose. It's in there good. Oh. That's right through, I guess, there. Oh, look at the size of her. That was the same size as the last one I pulled out. Is he looking better? Oh, he's looking better, but we're not. We're not there yet? We're not there yet. So that's all good there. That's all heels. This isn't. You didn't pull anything out of here, eh, Matt? No, here, right nothing. Here no, outside. nothing, Andy. Everything that I pulled out was from the front of his mouth and the top of the front of the mouth. There was one uh, that I pulled out the roof of his mouth near his back molars. That was it. Do you think there's one embedded back there? He has a lump 
there, so the back of his tongue. just no tips, no nothing there. But all of his epiglottis, his larynx, everything, access into his trachea, esophagus, uh, uh, soft palate is all healed. Uh, so we're down to one lump that's the size of uh, well, maybe a quarter to a loony in diameter. Well, that's pretty big. Um, well, it's a lot smaller than what it used to be for sure. So now it's a matter of you know what's in the lump what's in the lump so I'll poke it and see if there's a, an abscess in there what's going on in there. so right now Andy's looking for pus and that uh, sample he just took out of Doug's uh, throat but really good news his throat uh, the swelling's all gone down so this helps Doug breathe this tube yeah, we keep everything open, then if we have to put them on oxygen or anesthetic gas, we can Poor do Doug, so. he's my God, Doug. But really good news, your throat's better. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You can get back to work. Almost. <laughs> Pretty close. Oh, we need you back at work, too. We need you back big time. So Doug uh, potentially has a quill stuck in his, uh, his uh, uh, tongue. So those are all neutrophils there. It's all those dark stain cells are uh, neutrophils, so pus forming cells, so there's an inflammatory response there that would suggest that, you know, uh, that there's a probably a foreign body inside that area of inflammation. So it only really makes sense that it would be a porcupine quill. Okay, so Dougie's going to have a minor surgery here, and we're going to try to find this quill that's in his uh, mouth, well, his tongue, actually. Oh, Dougies, you look so sad. This is so good news, though, that your breathing is back to normal. This is so much better to handle today than two weeks ago. Last two weeks ago, I was a freaking mess. Ready? All right, Dougies. Oh, you're still pretty heavy. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Even more so. Yeah, 131 pounds of Jello, eh? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm a vet assistant today. All right, guys, so what's happening here is uh, they can't access the back of his uh, tongue uh, from inside, so he has to uh, make an incision on Doug's neck to get access to this big lump that's at the base of his uh, tongue, which Andy, uh, isn't, he's absolutely positive that there's a quill embedded inside Doug's tongue. And if we leave it, um, we can end up having a lot more, a lot bigger problems than this. This is uh, not fun watching this, guys. So you're holding the tongue in place? Uh, I'm holding the tongue and then my index finger is actually forcing that abscess or that insisted tissue out towards Sarah, out okay. through the incision. Okay. So. so if I push it out, then we move all of the risky anatomy away, right? Yep. So we're forcing So you're just cutting through a, a thin flesh then? Yeah. It's still hard to watch. Yeah, you don't have to watch it, Matt. Like, it's not for everybody, that's for sure. <laughs> Andy was just telling me that the uh, he's got a perfect access point to the uh, 
the uh, cyst uh, that's on Doug's tongue now. He's inside of it, but uh, the uh, the quill that's broken off in his tongue is eluding the search. Okay, guys, it's been like uh, an hour. Doug's been uh, under here. They're having no luck finding this quill. This is just crazy over a quill. Putting Dougie back together. Sure. All of this over a porcupine quill. Yep. Unbelievable. Mm, Doug. Oh man. You, you're really putting me through the ringer here. Okay, Doug. You just woke up. Mm -hmm. I gotta come back and get you later. Hmm. Can you move your tail, Doug? No, you're not, eh? You did earlier. Oh, Doug. Well, guys, that was an ordeal. Um, poor Dougie. Um, he was on the operating table uh, on the operating table for an hour and a half. Um, Andrew, you know, they they went through the whole cyst. There's absolutely not one part of the cyst that did not. Uh, get uh, looked at he took out all the dead tissue and they they couldn't find anything so they put a drain in uh, which is he's going to have to have the drain in for four to f in four to six days um, and if there is anything left in his body it will come out the drain uh, from what he's telling me uh, but the poor dog you know over a porcupine kill but this is um, you know uh, <laughs> it's a big day on the duck adventure anyways, but it wasn't life-threatening, not like the first time. Andy said that uh, Doug's throat uh, had uh, completely healed. Uh, actually, his throat today looked absolutely normal, like nothing wrong with his throat. And uh, he told me that even uh, they couldn't have done anything two weeks ago because his throat was in, was in such rough shape they couldn't have operated on him. So it, it actually, he had to get better before they could do this operation today and uh, they thought they could just do a, a little bit of a lance but it turned out as it was so far back on his throat that they had to go through the outside so poor Doug is going to be like in so much pain guys and you know uh, this is a this is a major ordeal for poor Dougie you know it's a major ordeal for me actually too so but I'm coming back in three hours and we'll come up and pick uh, we'll come back and pick Dougie up oh he's in the cage Oh, Dougie's. No, no, stay down, Doug. Okay. No, 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 Doug. Stay, stay, Doug. Stay. No, 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 no. You're not coming out yet. Yeah. Oh, Dougie, you can't back, back, back. Let's go back. Come on, come on, Doug. Doug, come on. I'm really sorry. This had to be done to you, Doug. Oh, Dougie. My God, that's so brutal looking. I know. It's the worst when they have the dreams. Oh in. man. Sit. Let me take a look. Okay, relax. Oh Dougie, that looks bad. Oh man. What a nasty looking thing. Relax, Doug. Oh my poor dog. Stay there, Doug. Okay, let's put you in the back of the truck. Doug, slow down. Slow down. Okay, up we go. Again. Okay. I'll be right back. Oh, Dougies. You're breaking the bank here, my friend. Oh, Dougs. Come on, let me in. Come on. Come on. In you go. Oh, Doug. All right, Dougie, let's put you in the back room. You have to go for a pee? All right, Doug, are you, are you done? Or do you want to go number two? That's really bothering your neck, isn't it? Do you have to do number two? Yep, number two. All right, let's put you in the house. No, oh, we'll put you in the back room. And I'll take that off your neck. And then I got to come up with a loose uh, old t-shirt around your neck for the dripping. Because for the next four days, come on, Doug. The next four days, you're going to be a dripping mess. Oh, guys, what a brutal day. Um, I, I've been back for about an hour. I've got Doug in the back room. I had to make a bandana for his neck because it's draining, uh, which is a good thing. The vet says, you know, the more draining it does, the better. So 
you know, to get uh, whatever his body is producing the pus, and hopefully, you know, it's going to expel uh, whatever was stuck, what the tip of the quill, because it wasn't a full-blown quill. Uh, it was a, it was a broken off piece. That's the only because there's no way the vet said with the amount of uh, the dead flesh that he dug out of Doug's tongue. Uh, from the cyst building up there there was he says there's no way a, like a full-blown quill was in there It was a tip or something like that. So Anyways, I'm uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm uh, I, I when I got home my gut was killing me the nerves uh, this whole thing, you know, I'm uh, I uh, I tried to film it for you guys, uh, but I, I'm sorry. I didn't get as much as I wanted to uh, To share with you to see what Doug went through. Uh, I got some you know, but uh, the poor guy, you know, full-blown surgery, and my vet, you know, man, if you haven't, uh, you know, liked the Animal Pinnacle Hospital page yet, I plead with you, go down there, click if you got Facebook and like the page, because, you know, Andrew, he's, he was, he's on holidays this week, and, you know, I've been bothering him on holidays, uh, talking to him on the phone at night, and, and he, you know, put his family aside, and, and, came in and took care of Doug and like there's another vet there you know and you know the actually was uh, Sarah was a uh, you know was uh, was assisting Andrew you know I had two vets working on Doug and and it's like you know he didn't have to come in uh you know to do this and uh you know Sarah could have done it but you know Andrew dropped everything and put his family aside and came in and and took care of Doug um as I can't say enough you know thanks to the guy uh be but he's an ultimate vet he's um he cares, you know, and he, and he really likes Doug. He thinks Doug's an awesome dog. Uh, he can't believe how Doug went from an apartment to his living, what he's doing now, you know, because he says he deals with farm uh, dogs all the time, and it, Doug is not the norm. He, he's told me many times that, uh, you know, the way Doug is is, is an anomaly. Uh, you don't get dogs uh, like Doug. So I got to do my chores because I'm way behind today. Um, I honestly, guys, I'm not going to film tomorrow. I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't, I don't see myself filming anything tomorrow. I'm going to just spend the day with Doug and, and, and play nurse and take care of him and, uh, and, and, you know, and just watch. I don't know. I'm a mess. <laughs> I honestly, guys, I am. Because I did not expect, surgery wasn't on the plate today. Uh, that, that was the thing. Why everything got caught off guard today. Uh, it, Doug was not supposed to go into surgery today. Doug was, we were taking Doug in, you know, to have a quick scope. Uh, I looked down his throat, see how he was doing, and that's when Andrew discovered the giant cyst that was forming in Doug's tongue. Uh, you know, because his throat is perfect. Like Doug, he's, Andrew was blown away how good his throat was today. Uh, but uh, the cyst was an alarm because if we would have left it, he said, Matt, in two weeks you would have had to come back and it would have been huge. It would have been a big deal. Uh, so today actually was minor surgery compared to what it could have been in two weeks. And and the fact that you know, anybody, you know, you're thinking that I should have had this done right off the start. It, it, the thing was, we didn't know there was a quill in his tongue and, and his throat was too far damaged to do any operation. Like Andrews could not have done a thing with him. He, he could not have operated the way Doug's throat was two weeks ago. So, you know, Doug needed the last two weeks to get his throat back uh, to normal, which it is. Uh, Andrew said, like, the, the dog's throat looks perfect. So that means, you know, if it wasn't for the surgery, Doug would be running around the yard right now doing his job and maybe get a mink, you know, or, uh, or save the ducks from whatever, whatever is going on here. So I'm gonna do my duck chores. I'm not gonna do much more filming, actually, guys. I'm, I'm gonna go and take care of my dog, uh, my buddy, and uh, you know, and I, I, I thank you guys uh, for caring and, and your private messages. I've been getting a lot of them, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sorry that I, I can't reply back uh, because you know I, I gotta take care of my dog. I think I have a hard decision to make here, guys, on handicapped duck. Um, I think something's seriously wrong upstairs. Um, I just went into the the barn. I'm doing the chores here, filling up the feeders. Went to the barn and, I, and Handicapped Duck was in the corner of the barn uh, with its head stuck in the corner doing nothing. It's just like, you know, like I thought it was dead actually. Sure, it wasn't dead, but unbelievably thirsty. The duck doesn't know enough to come outside and have a drink. Like I put it in the water here and I went and got the feed and I've got the wheelbarrow. Like I've been screwing around in the garage, back and forth getting feed. Now this duck has been in the water now for about 10 minutes. And then like, and drinking like crazy, like it, it, it was sitting in the barn, uh, dehydrating itself. Unless I put it in the water, uh, it, 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 all it does is stay in the corner and do nothing. Like I'm, I'm really starting to think that maybe, you know, I think maybe Handicapped Duck might be miserable. 
I don't think it's in pain because, uh, you know, actually the limp, it stopped limping. Um, or the limp, I should say, has gotten much less. But uh, I, I don't understand. Like now it's going crazy in the water playing and uh, and it was in the, you know, in the barn. In the, it was actually jammed in the corner with his head in the corner, you know, like it was some, like some kind of death trance. I don't know. I, I don't get it. I don't understand this duck. I, 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 I honestly, guys, like I'm worried because once I, you know, take this divider down, which is going to be coming down here, uh, like the first week of August, first, second of August, I'm going to take it down. And, uh, you know, the, the, this duck can't live with all those ducks. Uh, you know, it, 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 it can't, it, uh, you know, unless, unless I, I, unless I mark the crowd of it so I can always tell where a handicapped duck is and which, which one's a handicapped duck. And, which I don't think it'd be hard to tell which one's handicapped duck. It'd be the one stuck in the corner. Like, look at it now. It's in the water playing, and it's it's you know it's got its head under the water doing duck stuff. Like, but it's been like in the barn all day. I don't know. I've got a bad feeling. I gotta do something here shortly. With, I don't know if it's sick or if it's just you know mentally something wrong. I just filled all the feeders. And the little ducks went into the barn and just woofed down a ton of food. And then uh, a whole group of them just took off to the swamp. Look at that. They, uh, a whole bunch of them, they, they, these, were, these guys were all in the barn eating. I just watched them come out of the barn, walk around the whole property, and then head down to the, down to the lake, out of the creek. I mean, can't even talk here today. I don't believe it. Look at that. Oh, sorry guys, I deer fly is biting my head here. Unbelievable. I went and got the camera. I had the camera hanging on the other side of the fence, so it took a while and they had already made it down. There. But it was so funny because I filled up the feeder in the barn with the baby food, the crumble, and uh, they all ran in there and just, you know, woofed down a whole bunch of water, so they were just woofing it down. Uh, and then they, they all just turned around and got up and headed out of the barn. And I was over here doing the water and I look up and they came around the, the other side of the barn and cut across the, uh, the mud and went down in the water. Doug, you look so sad. I know, eh? This sucks what you're being put through. I've got, uh, I'll just show you guys what it looks like here. That's it right there, guys. That's what's sticking out of his throat right now. I don't know if I'm getting a good view of that. There, yeah, yeah, there you go. That's what's coming out of Doug's throat. So he's pretty sad right now. I've got that t-shirt which I have to keep putting up so it catches the drip because it, it's a bit of a mess. Unfortunately, Doug is going to be generating a mess here for the next couple of days. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I think he might even have to sleep down here in the back uh, room, which is going to just devastate him because uh, he's dripping and it's like uh, I've, this bandana thing is not working out. I've, I've tried everything I can to keep it up and uh, you know, up, I can't, and the vet told me it has to be really loose so that it, it, it stays draining because if it's tight, it'll, what will happen is it'll harden up and it won't drain, which defeats the purpose of having it in there. So. I think Dougie might be sleeping in the back room, which he will not understand why that's happening because, well, he's never slept in the back room. He's always been with me.